We've spent 60 years figuring out how to get to Mars. The rockets, the trajectories, the landing systems. We've spent almost no time figuring out how to survive being human once we're there. Mars doesn't want to kill you quickly. It wants to kill you slowly, in ways that compound on each other. Every day you survive makes you less capable of surviving the next one. Let's start with dust. Mars dust averages three micrometers, perfect size to bypass your nose and throat and settle deep in your lungs. On Earth, we call this silicosis. Miners get it, sandblasters get it. Your immune cells try to eat the silica particles, they can't. So they release chemicals that scar your lung tissue. The scar tissue spreads. Treatment, primarily supportive. Doctor speak for, we make you comfortable while it gets worse. On Earth, you can leave the mine. On Mars, the mine is everywhere, forever. But dust isn't the only thing in that soil. Mars is saturated with perchlorates. Phoenix Lander found it. Curiosity confirmed it. 0.5 to 1% of the soil by weight. California's safe limit for drinking water is six parts per billion. Martian water contains 10 million parts per billion. You'd need to remove 99.9994% before you could safely drink it. Perchlorate destroys your thyroid, controls metabolism, growth, brain development. In the 1960s, a factory exposed 13 workers. Seven died. Their bone marrow just stopped. Every vegetable grown in Martian soil accumulates it. The dust you can't escape contains it. Now gravity. Mars is 38% of Earth's. In microgravity, you lose 1% to 2% bone density per month. Muscles atrophy 20 to 30% in weeks. Recovery is never complete, but you don't arrive fresh. You arrive after six to nine months in a spacecraft. In microgravity, you land on Mars already broken. And your first task is physically demanding work in a spacesuit. Every breath you take on Mars was manufactured. The atmosphere is 95% CO2, at less than 1% of Earth's pressure. Step outside without a suit and your blood boils while you suffocate. CO2 doesn't let you pass out peacefully. Your body has receptors for it. You feel yourself suffocating. You feel the air hunger. Inside the habitat, CO2 must be constantly scrubbed. At 4-5%, to 5 disorientation. At 8%, death. Every system is a single point of failure. Your brain runs on a 24-hour clock. Mars doesn't. A Mars day is 24 hours and 39 minutes. Your circadian rhythm can't adapt. During rover missions, 82% of controllers reported fatigue and impaired concentration. Most gave up within weeks. On Mars, you can't give up, and the light won't help. Dust filters out the blue wavelengths your brain needs. During dust storms, daylight dims for months. Miss your light therapy and your brain loses track of time entirely. In 1999, researcher Judith Lapierre joined a Mars simulation in Moscow. Less than a month in, the mission commander grabbed her and forcibly kissed her. She was told it was normal. She was told not to complain. The crew hid all the knives. Not because of a policy, because they looked at their situation and thought, we're trapped here for months. No one's coming. We need to hide the knives from each other. A 2022 survey of Antarctic stations found over 40% experienced assault or harassment. Antarctica has evacuation options. Mars doesn't. You're trapped with whoever you're trapped with. For years, no real-time communication. No authority, no escape. NASA doesn't study this. No policies, no reporting systems, no support. These aren't seven separate problems. They compound. Lung scarring means less exercise. Thyroid damage disrupts metabolism. Sleep deprivation accelerates bone loss. 
Stress accelerates everything. The person you're in conflict with is also deteriorating, also trapped. Every day makes it worse. Every day makes you less capable of handling it. We've figured out how to get bodies to Mars. We haven't figured out how to keep them human. What happens when the first crew realizes they're not coming back the same? Do they tell us or do they just stop responding? <laughs>